What you are saying, Burton? Well, what I'm saying, sir, is I can't work. Yes. Because of my shoulder, sir. Indeed. What I wanted, sir, was to find out if the rugby union would... Well, if they'd let me have... I'm a bit strapped for cash at the moment, sir. Money, Burden? Are you asking us for money? Well, I certainly ain't earning any, Reverend. If we gave you a penny, one penny, Burden, do you know what would happen? Well, I... We would destroy your amateur status. The most precious possession of any sportsman. You'd become a paid professional, Burden. All I'm saying, sir, is I'm not insured. I can't work. I can't... Burton, do you realise what you're saying? If we were to entertain your request, even for a moment, if we were to give you a single penny, it could end up changing the whole basis of rugby in Australia. We'd become a group of mercenaries doing it for cash. Do you understand what I'm saying? blunt, bugger off. And a lot of stuff about being an amateur and that I shouldn't even think of compensation. Oh, terribly sorry, old chap. You might have fallen and break your bloody neck, would you? Oh, the lads had a bit of a whip round for you. Tell them, tell them things. Yeah, we ought to stick their faces in it. <laughs> they made me feel like an ungrateful turd or something. We ought to do what they did in England. What's that then? That's it. That's bloody it. What is? Well, they formed a league, right? And they pay the players, and if they get injured, they get compensation. Split? Yeah, why not? Uh, you're a dreamer, Jim. Thank you. 
Uh, if you don't like to move towards the front of the stand here, you might be able to hear me a bit better. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to this historic occasion. The first exhibition match of the New South Wales Rugby League. A new and totally democratic form of rugby in which the players are no longer treated like trained animals. In which nobody ever turns up to watch it. The great and glorious game of rugby has, in my opinion of later years, been corrupted and adulterated at the hands of petty officials. This match holds a new and totally unique Australian approach to the business of playing rugby. We intend to play rugby not as members of the old school tie brigade, but as larrikin, knockabout, men of equality, New South Wales Rugby League. You know what we need, don't you? What's that, boy? Dally Messenger, that's what we need. Oh, a great Dally Messenger. People pay to see him, then. Just walk in. I know Dally, I'll talk to him. No, I don't think that's the right tactics, but Oh, it bloody is. Don't be so jumpy. You've got a good start. You've even had a fixture. You call that a game of rugby football? But judging by that crowd, mate, that was more like an amateur string quartet on a wet night. All you need is a star, Jim, then you'll be up and running. I'll talk to him. He'll come round. I don't think that's the way to go about it. I mean, look. Here I am, I'm paying sportsmen. Ooh. But Dally Messenger probably thinks I'm a bit too... Seedy? You don't think I'm seedy, do you, Bluey? No, Jim, of course I don't, but you know Dally. Well, that's just it, I don't know Dally. He's very pure as the driven snow. Hey, can we have your autograph? Sure. Yours first? What's your name? Jessica. There you go. Today, Bruce. Are you blokes off? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Well, pretty catch pretty you soon. Right yep. Great game. See you later. What are his weaknesses, Billy? He doesn't have any weaknesses, Jim. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. And he doesn't hang around with loose women. Right, where does he stand on money? I don't think he's interested in money, Jim. He's not interested in money. No. Oh. Oh, my God. I want to know everything about him. I want to know I want to know where he eats, where, where he sleeps, what his friends are, what he does in his leisure time, what he reads. Oh, I don't think he reads, Jim. I think he runs and slides and leaps and tackles and, and scores tries, but I don't think he reads. The family have a bait yard. I think it out in Double Bay. Ooh. No, faster, faster! I'm trying to beat it straight! Anyway, I think he's got the better of us. What are we doing this for anyway? Rugby. Remember? Look, look, uh, you talk to him, will you, mate? If you say so. Oh. Dally! Louis! Good to see you. How are you? 
Look, um, this is a friend of mine, Jim Giltman. How do you do, sir? Uh, look, uh, we should have approached you before, but I'll just come straight out with it. We want you to join us in the rugby league. Without you, I don't reckon we stand a chance, quite frankly. I don't know about that, Bluey. I... Well, you don't have to say anything now, Dally. But it is a bit critical, you know. I can't bear to think about all sides of it, you know. I mean, I just play football, you know. You better ask Mum. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Let me know what she says. Yeah, I will. Just look at that water. What's the mother like? Dolly, you have precisely five minutes in which to come inside and make yourself presentable for tea. This is going to require some thought. I'm James Giltonen, and this is Bluey Burden, the noted rugby player. Hey, Amen. I'm afraid I know nothing whatsoever about sport. Oh. <clears throat> Are you a sportsman, Mr. Giltonen? Oh, you could say so, ma'am. You have uh, such a persuasive manner, Mr. Giltonen, that you quite frighten me. Well, I apologise, ma'am. It wasn't my intention. No. Well, a good salesman should reassure his clients. So, you're a salesman, are you? I am, ma'am. Aren't you going to tell me what a good idea it is, this um, league of yours? Only when you're ready, ma'am. Very well. Go on, then. Now, what we propose is to pay some expenses for broken time. That is, the time that... Uh, is taken up by a match when a, a player could have been playing and earning income. And we're also going to cover all their medical expenses. And that's why we want Dally to join us. You missed out another reason why you want Dally, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry? Well, people come to see him play, don't they? I don't know much about rugby football, but someone told me that 52,120 people came to see him at the Sydney game last month. Darling. Yes, Mother. I've been speaking to these gentlemen. Yes, Mother. They look like a couple of pickpockets. Yes, Mother. But they're all right. You can join them. Yes, Mother. <clears throat> this is a great day for Australian sport, Mrs. Messenger. Your son here is perhaps the greatest rugby player in the world today. some financial difficulties, Mr. Gilton. And... Uh, I wouldn't listen to rumours. The financial situation of the New South Wales Rugby League couldn't be healthier. In fact, as proof, we plan a full-scale tour of the Northern Union Rugby Clubs of England this summer. You do? 
At a special executive committee meeting last night, it was decided that we should fully back a promotional tour of, of the UK. On making this decision, let me tell you, and this is on the record, we were absolutely flooded with money from every angle, from every side. People are absolutely desperate to be part of this. Now, does that sound to you like the nerve of a rugby league under severe financial pressure? Thanks. Not at all. There you go, man. Did I hear you say we're touring Great Britain, Chip? Uh, a special executive committee made that decision just now, yeah, mate. But why a tour, Jim? I mean, we're broke, aren't we? Spend money to save money, haven't you heard that one? I mean, we've got to keep up the push. We've got to stay at the front. We can't let them know we're down. We can't let them know we're broke or, or owe any money. They'll come knocking at the door straight away. I mean, I know that from when I was a salesman. But how are we going to pay for it, Jim? The Lord will provide. Goldthorpe scores five tries against Leeds. Goldthorpe, the hero of the Halifax match. Well, beware, Albert Goldthorpe. The kangaroos are coming. Evening, Albert. George. Usual. My usual. Nice evening. Nice evening. God bless you, George. You ever been to Australia, Albert? No, I, I can't say as I have, George, no. No, well, I thought not. It's a long way away. You don't have any relatives out there, do you, Albert, by any chance? No, George, we were always very law-abiding in our family. Oh. Huh. Because there's this letter for you. Oh, I? From Australia. Really? It's been all over, this letter. Went to club and several places, but it didn't find you. Well, it's found me now, isn't it? They must have thought this is the place to find Albert. Aye. Could I see it? Of course you can, Albert. Hmm? Are you going to open it, then? I might. A bit later. Ah. Might be bad news, might it not? It might be, Albert. Somebody could have died in Australia. Not that you'd know who they were, of course. No. Unless they were a very distant relative. Someone who'd passed away and left you something like. It's possible. It's quite weighty. Let me buy you a whiskey, Albert. That was very kind of you, George. Aye. It's from a man called Mr. James Giltinen. Well, well, who's that, then? Oh, he, uh, he runs a rugby team of some kind. Oh, right. And he wishes to tour this country. Is that right, Alwood? They're quite simple, these Australians, I would imagine. I would imagine they are, Alwood. <laughs> Thank you. 
will appreciate, I'm sure, Mr. Gilton, that we, as a responsible financial institution, could not, uh, despite, I might say, the strength of our patriotic feelings, enter into any form of sponsorship or of proposed tour of the United Kingdom. I might add that, as a rugby union man myself, I would personally find it difficult to support the whole organization, contravening as it does the very spirit of amateurism. The game for the sake of the game, you know. guarantee for you in every program of each match of the tour which let's face it's not going to go much below 50,000 crowd and that's not counting the people who take the program home and show it to friends a slogan that says drink Castlemaine ale before the match Daily Messenger does does it? I'm teetotal Mr Jackson look whether Daly does or does not is irrelevant that's completely irrelevant the point is that they'll think that he does and I think, my God, if I drink Castlemaine Ale, I'll be able to play rugby like Daly Messenger. But, Jim, I'm not sure we're ready to export Castlemaine Ales to the north of England. Or to the south, come to that. We don't know how the Poms would react to it. We don't have any export facilities. We... we could take a couple of barrels with us. We'll have a few glasses outside the ground. And when people taste this stuff, they'll be screaming out for you to set up export facilities. You'll be getting letters here in Sydney, Australia, saying, for God's sake, send us more of that fantastic beer. Right. <laughs> Some form of fair reduction. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think we said 40%, but. Uh... Yes, but you hadn't fixed on the manner in which the uh, fair was to be worked. Well, I wasn't aware that we were going to be working the passage. That's right. Uh, look, Captain McKenzie's let us know his crew shortages. Now, it was originally thought that your men might act as waiters, but, uh, well, I think uh, the present uh, sort of wisdom is that uh, they might be better involved in stoking the boilers. What do you mean by involved? Well, do you think it'll be all right with them? Look, I carry my men with me. Oh, I'm sure you do. Well, just how much stoking is there to do? Oh, it's regular shifts. Um, we'd be talking about 45, 50 reduction. Well, the final figure would have to be worked out with Captain McKenzie. Well, I don't see a problem there. No, no I don't see that as a problem. Very good. Now tell me, Mr. Gilton, um, what is rugby league? Is it the same as normal rugby? How do you mean normal rugby? Oh, yeah, well, normal rugby. Rugby league is normal rugby. Any other kind of rugby is a perversion. All right? All right. Dally right. Messenger over there? That most certainly is, sir. Oh, you've got Dally Messenger, I suppose you're all right, even I've heard of him. Well, this is a very important project, you know, it's a very important project indeed. And best of luck to you, Mr. Gilden. Thank you. Enjoy your trip. All right.
Morris, won't you, Mr. Gilsonen? Oh, yes, certainly will. There will be no problems at all on this tour, madam. That sounds very dull, Mr. Gilsonen. As well as I understand it, Dally doesn't like problems, Mrs. Messenger. If anything happens to it, Mr. Gilsonen, I'll come looking for you. Well, we wouldn't want that to happen now, would we? <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Dally is in the bloody league at the moment, isn't he, Jim? Dally and a few others. Um, when you signed him up, though, you knew the tour was all right, didn't you? Daniel, learn one thing. Nobody likes to give anyone, whether it's their wife, their father, their child or lover, money. Nobody likes to give anyone money. And my principal aim in life to make people forget that simple rule. You stirring again, Frawley? Yep. the English. That's it. The wonder why that footballer is called Goldthorpe. Albert Goldthorpe. He's the secretary of the association. Very fast bloke, so I'm told. The English reckon he's the greatest in the world. What? Greater than Dally? You stirring, Frawley? Yep. Apparently there's a place called Wigan. Apparently it's great for nightlife. Now, I think we should move on to the next point of the agenda, which is the question of the Australian League, which wishes to tour the Northern Union area of influence and discuss their bona fides and so on, since this obviously is a very new thing. Indeed it is, James. Now, I've been making some inquiries about this team, and I understand they do play a form of Northern Union, though what form that takes, I've yet to ascertain. I imagine rather primitive, Albert. Do we know what colour they are? Well, they said out about that in letter. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, personally. But I think we ought to know in case you have any special dietary requirements and so on. Mm. Oh, and uh, dressing rooms, I suppose. I mean, are they Aboriginal in any degree, Albert? Well, I have to say, it is a somewhat shaky outfit. It appears they learned the rules of Northern Union from some bloke in pub. <laughs> but as I say, I've been making some inquiries, and their manager, a one Mr. James Giltinen, seems a very lively type, and they have a player you may have heard of, Dally Messenger. Oh. An international of some standing, but... You can let me deal with him. <laughs> right. So what do we do now? Well, I think we should go ahead. 
As I say, this Giltyman seems a very forceful character, and as far as I can make out, not unendowed with cash. Well, I suggest we organise a deputation to meet them. I have to say that communications with Australians is not the easiest. Where is he at the moment? Somewhere in Indian Ocean, I think. I see. But no postal address as such? No, James. Not as such, no. Hmm. All right, Dally. Not so bad. I think I'll miss the old girl. <coughs> All right, lads. I thought uh, before we eat tonight, we'd have a tour of the ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll do the whole lot. We'll go to the bridge, the bar. Yeah. Uh, the lifeboat shouts for help. <laughs> and uh, maybe even we'll do the uh, boiler room. Boiler room? That's it, the boiler room. Well, if you say so. Amazing, Jim. Dally. <laughs> I mean, when we get over there, you're going to be as fat as lard. I mean, you'll run out on the pitch roll over in the mud and die. <laughs> Not that I think the captain had led us, though. Was a... See, as I understand it, uh, the stokers are kind of elite on the ship. I mean, I mean like, they're the, the real men of the ship, you know? Yeah? I don't think there'd be any vacancies, unfortunately, for that type of training. Well, you could ask him, Jim. Oh. Albie, is it some sort of problem? No. No, Jim. Well, if you boys insist, I, I, I'll ask him. But look, for Christ's sake, don't you mention it to the crew, because as I understand it, these stokers guard their position very jealously. Is that right? That's right. What is that man up to? I think he's worried about the team's fitness, Dan. Yeah? Yeah, he works round the clock to make sure that everything's all right. Well, you're his blue-eyed boy, aren't you? If you didn't want to come, Dan, a lot of blokes would have given their right arm for this trip. going to be all right, isn't it? What? The tour, everything. It's going to be fantastic. It's just perfect. This will be the making of Australian Rugby League. But don't you worry about it. All you have to do is play football. It's funny. Mum used to do all the worrying at home, you know. Thank you. 
It's got to be here somewhere, Robert. But where, James? I'll ask someone, should I? Whom? I'll find someone. SS Macedonia. Where's she out of? From Australia. The boat aft has just come in. That might be her. Aye. Aye, that'll be the one. Come on, lads. Yes. <laughs> well, you all look magnificent. He'll have his turn drill next. Look at the buttons on him. Uh, Rosenfeld and Crawley are particularly well turned out. I'm proud of you. Do your jacket up, will you? Right. Now, when we round the next bend, we'll be coming into our docking area. And even from a mile or so away, I imagine we should be able to see our reception committee. Now, if there's a brass band playing, I would like you all to wait politely until they've finished. And if there's a bunch of flowers to be collected, I'd like Dally here to accept them. What if there's a bunch of turnips, Jim? Well, I think that uh, Rosenfeld should accept them. Now, <clears throat> I want you all to remember that you are Australians, and as such, you are ambassadors for your country, and also for the new democratic sport of rugby league. And I'd like you all to behave with dignity and grace. Carry on. Fall in! Cheers, boys. Cheers, we are together. Well, I don't see any brass band. Not a flower in sight. Maybe they weren't allowed to bring the instruments onto the dock. Here we are. This is them. Look at the size of that bugger. Albert Goldthorpe. <clears throat> On behalf of the Northern Union of Rugby Clubs, we welcome you to Great Britain. Here, here. Thank you. We welcome you as fellow working men who are about to play the great game of rugby in our new and democratic way. Here is a presentation scroll from the Northern Union Clubs. We would like you to accept it as we accept you on our shores. What? What? Uh, you are the Kangaroos Rugby League Touring Team of Australia, are you not? Hey. We are the Salzburg Wind Ensemble. Are you the very reverend Minchin Carter of Red Roofs in Cornwall? No, I'm bloody not. I'm positive it would Tilbury. Albert? Albert? No brass bands, no reception committee. Maybe it's a surprise. Right, lads, it's a uh, train of breath. What happens there, Jim? We get an orchestra and chorus? Look, uh, we'll be lucky to get a baked potato, let alone a new pair of boots. Well, there's supposed to be a bit of a reception there, and if we just catch a... But, Jim, can we'll... I say something? I don't think we should start in on each other. It's going to be a long trip, right? I think we should divide our energies into Hammer and them. And if we do want someone to blame, let's blame them and hammer them to bits tomorrow. That's the longest thing I've heard you say, darling. Yeah. He's getting quite a grown-up boy, isn't he? Look, I've heard this doing Bradford will be pretty good, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have moved the town hall, all right? Is Dully... Oh, I'll go and have a word with him.
see him. I think he's uh, probably still down at the docks. in Australia, we, we normally like a few people to turn up, you know. I mean, uh, did you tell anyone about this match? Have you, have you publicised it at all? Or, or, or you like to do it private? Is that it? Oh, I know what it is. It's 70,000 blokes going to leap out of a hole in the ground any moment now and shout April Fool. This is all you get, I'm afraid. <clears throat> well, where are they then? I mean, would you mind telling me? Or, or is, it, is this a national day of mourning? What? Do you have some strange English tribal custom that says, uh, thou shalt not watch rugby on the third Tuesday before Lent? And if that's the case, is this the third Tuesday before Lent? And if that's the case, why are we playing this bloody match at all? Your players are doing a kind of dance, Mr. Gilton. It's not a dance, it's an Aboriginal war chant. Quite attractive. With respect, I did not come here to discuss the nature of our Aboriginal war chants, but to ask what has happened to the population of Bradford this afternoon. That it's home, Mr. Giltonen. And pray tell me, Mr. Perivale, why are they at home? Well, all of Bradford has been on strike for nigh on 18 months. Well, why didn't someone mention this? I mean, why didn't someone take the trouble to let me know that? I mean, I'm working on a very tight budget here, and I've not come halfway around the world to have my lads run around in front of a few half-wits. With respect, Mr. Giltonen, some of us up north are quite intelligent. Jesus Christ! Look at the size of lot. I and some of us are quite big as well. <laughs> are your club as dirty as this, Mr. Goldthorpe? Oh, some say dirtier. Generally the ones who lose. Not that you're that kind of player, eh? Speed and skill, Mr. Gilton, and speed and skill. <laughs> Go on to him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Go! Last out alive! Get alive! There, that's what you're up against, eh? See what you're up against? volatile, our Mr. Giltinen. He is, Albert. And about as good as finding his way round as you. Well, this is it, Albert. And I don't think he's that flush with cash. I don't think he is, Albert. <laughs> his team are under a bit of a strain and not always totally behind him. Mrs. Shaw, Albert. But in many ways, I prefer him to you. Why is that, Albert? Well, basically, because I think he's got bollocks. <sighs> well, this is it. Well, 
on. Come on. Now listen, they're leading us 8 6, right? So I'll tell you why. Because we're playing their game and they should be playing ours. Speed's our game. Get the ball out the back line. Don't slug it out with these blokes. Keep it moving. We've got to spin it wide. Right. Hold on me to Albie and get down to you, Dally. Dally. You've got to have a dig yourself. Come on, let's hurt these blokes. Listen, Dally. If I've been a bit tetchy, I want to apologise. Don't worry about it, Dan. It's just that I've been away from home. Sometimes, oh, Jim. Oh, of course, I know. Well, he goes on a little bit too long, you know. I do know. You know what? What? He reminds me of my mother. Yeah. Well, if you have your argument with your mother, you make sure you have it with her, not him. I don't think he could take it. No? He bloody loves you, that bloke. Right, uh... Let's play some football. It's a bit yet before you play on Slut, isn't it, Mr. Giltonham? There's a few matches yet. Should be an interesting game. I think so. Well played. Good Do you have any pictures of yourself, Mr. Goldsall? Have you fallen in love with Mr. Gilton? Uh, I thought it might be a good idea to try and get more than three people to come and watch the match between you and Dally. You mean Hunslet versus the Kangaroos, Mr. Giltonen? Oh, I always think sport works best when it's personal. Well, this is personal, all right. This match? Well, you've only got one good player and the rest of the team know it. Well, there's always me. You, Mr. Giltonen? What did you do? Well... I help them accept their essential mediocrity. That's it then. I'll, I'll see you chaps in the club, all right? Right. Uh, all right. Uh, would you object if I sent a journalist along to see you, Mr. Goldthorpe? Well, what would this journalist want to ask us? Personal questions? Oh, all right. I'll see you in Hunslet. Oh, and uh, tell your lads to wear summer under trousers. I want you all to form up into an orderly group. I'm going to have to uh, ask the manager here for a bit of a favour. And I want you lot to look small. How do you mean, crouch or what? I want you to double up. Ah, you do mean crouch. No, I mean double up in the rooms. Well, do we do that, boys? Well, I was thinking, in fact, eight to a room. Eight? Six. Six? Five, then. You don't know how big the rooms are. They could be very big rooms. I thought we were supposed to be the professionals, Jim. You know, the mercenary scum that did it for the money. Yeah, well, it's just that the money's not very good at the moment. <laughs> you won't go angry. Right, now, just wait here and try not to look like a rugby team. Uh, what do you want us to look like, Jim? Well, just... Uh, just hang about and, and look like you're unemployed. Yeah, we soon will be if it keeps up like this. 
You guys are pretty tough on him. He can take it from us, not from you. Can you take it from me? Sure we can. We go up against the Hunslet lot soon. Eh? What's in Hunslet? Albert bloody Goldthorpe. Good afternoon, madam. Hello there. I wanted some rooms. How many? How big are they? Well, quite big. They're a fair size. Well, they're big rooms. Why do you want to know? I've got some, um, fairly large friends. This doesn't involve animals, does it? No, 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 God, no. Or women? Oh, absolutely not, madam. Or roughhousing? Absolutely not. Oh, I gave her an inch, she's free, what a man, I'm driving home. I gave her an inch, she's free, what a man. Oh, I gave her an inch, she's free, and she started to bleed. Push your belly close to mine and ring your bum. Uh, we are bachelors touring the northern industrial parts of Britain and, uh, well, as bachelors, we like... Like to what? We like to share rooms. Oh. I hope nothing is involved of an unsavoury nature. Madam, we are members of the New South Wales Christian Federation. Everybody into room two. Two. Hey, now let's get it under control. The boys, let's put the right down here, right now. Let's save the energy for the match. Jumping on the beds. Do you mind no jumping on the beds there? I don't want any windows broken and I don't want any singing. <laughs> right, when you're ready. We are four matches down. Only four. <laughs> and what we need is a public. Now we're playing better every match, but we're just not getting noticed. So what this tour needs is a focal point. What we need is a better hotel, too. Yeah, That's right. right. <laughs> Sport is an entertainment. It has climaxes and leads up to the climax. And I think I know what the climax of this tour is. What's that? The Hunslet match. Daly versus Goldthorpe. All right? There are other people in the team, too, you know, Jim. Not when I finished with the Great British Press, there won't be. Not that one, Mrs. Oakes. No. No? No. I won that for playing barefoot against Keithley. Did you, Mr. Goldthorpe? Yes. I kicked a man called Baines halfway across the ground. Oh, I. I should have to think what might have happened to him had I been wearing boots. Don't you have it polished, then? I do not. I like it to look all tarnished and bleary. And every time I see it, I think of young Baines flying across the ground like a scolded frog. <laughs> it pleases me, Mrs. Oakes. Hey, you can polish my boots. Oh, you do have these polished, then? I do, indeed, I do. I trod on a man called Manning Fitzwater in those boots in 1902. He was a rugby union player. He taught modern languages at Leeds University, I think. But he was never quite the same after I trod on him. No, well, he wouldn't be, would he? I didn't tread on him just for the pleasure of so doing, you understand. I trod on him on my way to the line in the cause of duty, as it were. Well, quite. Well, we shook hands afterwards. Oh, well, it was nice you were able to. Actually, it was quite difficult for him, because Arthur Hughes had broken both his wrists, but he was a game little bugger. Well, everyone's talking about Australians. 
Mr. Gilsop. Huh? When do they come to Hunslet? Next week. They seem to be winning a few matches. They've had a few strokes of luck. Where do they stay? I've no idea, Mrs. Oates. <laughs> Intense by the look of them. Messenger is a player with more speed than any I have seen in the past. Weaving in and out of the opposition, opposition players, swerving and tackling and running with more grace even than Albert Gilthorpe in his heyday. What does that mean, Mrs. Oakes? Heyday. I don't know, Mr. Goldthorpe. I'm still in my heyday. This is my heyday. How old are you, Mr. Goldthorpe? In my thirties. In my heyday. Well, I'm sure this messenger won't be a match for you, Mr. Goldthorpe, no. Not by the time we've finished with him, Mrs. Oakes. I think I'll wander down to Butcher's shop. Have a word with Arthur Hughes. What do you want with Arthur Hughes? Never you mind, Mrs. Oakes. <laughs> Never you mind. Where are we now, Elby? Oh, God knows. What was the name of that last place called? Uh, Halifax. Oh, it's so bloody cold. Isn't it just? Cheer up, fellas. What do you have to be so bloody cheerful all the time for, Delhi? I'm not allowed to be down. I'm not allowed to be up. What the hell am I allowed to be? Tickets, please. <clears throat> Everybody happy? Well, look, we're uh, entering the busy and exciting metropolis of Sheffield, which is full of night spots and clubs, and it's also a fearsome centre for the Northern Union rugby. Now, this is going to be a stopover on our way to the Hunslet match. Now. Uh, I've had a few ideas about promotions in this town, and uh, one of them is like Dully and the rest of you with placards reading, we've come halfway across the world to thrash you. Right? Now, I also think that here we should ease into the build-up to the Hunslet match, which I see as the central promotional feature of this tour at the moment. This place is so far off the map, it's bloody invisible. Mm. Now, I've also had a bit of a bit of a think about the accommodation. Uh, now I realise that um, things have been a wee bit crowded in the hotels that we've been able to afford up to now. So what I've arranged is a luxury villa-type house in the Sheffield suburbs, where we'll be able to cater for ourselves, and you can really let your hair down. But no, I don't want you to let your hair down too far because there's an indemnity clause in this agreement for a substantial sum of money for breakages. What we could do with Jim is some women. Yeah, I'm for that. Right. Yeah. Women are the enemy of this sport. Women and drink. And tobacco. Well, all three of them are a bit of okay, though, aren't they? Well, aren't they? Very nice. Very nice. Good, you blokes, I don't know. Lovely day for it, Mrs. Jackson. It is, Mr. Hughes. Too nice to be in here. Oh, you're right, love. How's your husband, Keith? Oh, fair to middling. Good morning, Albert. Arthur, could I have a word with you? Of course you could, Albert. I've always a moment for you. You can wait for a nice piece of leg, can't you, Mrs. Jackson? 
I'll wait forever for a nice bit of leg. <laughs> Arthur, I have a rather delicate mission I would like to entrust to you. Well, I'm flattered, Albert. It's about rugby football. Well, I think I'm right in saying, Albert, that I'm one of the most well-informed persons in the north of England with regard to that particular subject. Quite so, quite so. Now, Arthur, if I had a dog, and there were another dog that I thought could beat my dog, what would I do if I were an unprincipled person? I don't know, Albert. What would you do if you were an unprincipled person? Well, I've heard of people unprincipled people who would sneak up on this enemy dog and feed it quantities of meat and potatoes thus inducing a drowsy and relaxed effect within the dog not conducive to speed i imagine albert i imagine not no so what do you want me to do feed dally messenger meat and potatoes he's not a bloody greyhound is he seen the telegraph the fastest thing on two legs, Dally Messenger, the Aussie Greyhound, has even more pace and style than the great Albert Goldthorpe in his heyday. I wish they'd stop using that word. What word's that, then? Heyday. I don't bloody like it. He's worrying you, Albert. Look, what I want you to do is have a look at him. Just see what his game's like. I mean... I don't want to be seen hanging around, you know what I mean? So just have a look at him and, um... And what? Give him a drink. I don't think they drink, these Australians. And we don't want him in tip-top condition, do we? I know what you mean. But don't go mad, Arthur. Don't brain him with a crowbar like you did Jack Wainwright. It's only a rugby game. It's not bloody war. It's war as far as I'm concerned, Albert. It always was. And it always will be. It's worse now I've retired. Can I buy you a drink? You must be frozen to death out here. Hey, good idea. Why not? Hmm. Four pints, please. Oh, I... That's all right. Dally doesn't drink. I'm afraid everyone drinks in here. <laughs> Is that right? Do you not care for it, then? Oh, it's delicious. I hope you're not insulting our national drink. I wouldn't dream of it. Another one? Oh, I couldn't. I really couldn't. Are you insulting our national drink? I most certainly am not. Four pints, please. All I'll say about your national drink is this. What's that, then? It's this. If your national drink is anything like half as dirty as your national game, it's the dirtiest bloody drink I've ever tasted in my life. I'll tell you this, Albert. He's useful. He's very, very useful. You were sent there to do some fact-finding, not intimidate me. I'm only telling the truth, Albert. I've not seen a player like that since... Since when? Well, since you, Albert. In your heyday. Oh, thank you very much, Arthur. Thank you very, very much. Good evening, dear boys. It's quarter to nine in the morning, Jukes. Ah, in here, dear boy, it is perpetual night. Two hours, please. 
What are you doing here, Jukes? I am writing my description of the Australian's latest triumph. Well, what was the match? Oh, the match is this afternoon. I think too close a contact with the game tends to blur one's prose style, don't you agree? Like an arrow from the bow of an English archer, messenger skimmed his way through a stiff sea of mud, penetrating the blank defences, weaving past blank, blank and blank, with an elegance and grace that astonished even those who spent a lifetime in the service of spectator to Lady Rugby, full point. On, on he went, goalpost in full view, quick as a mountain fox, to score the blank, blankiest try of the game. I know a little chap down there called um, Harris, who checks up on the details, such as the scoring and so on. Precisely. Everywhere I go, it seems I mean messenger. Like a valiant knight on a mission for King Arthur. Messenger, the heart of the Australian side, the darling of the rugby aficionado. The sun that dispels the grey clouds of temperament in this most physical of games sped on to his destination through the English mist. Even a player as fast and clever as Albert Goldthorpe in his heyday could scarcely hey. eat... I beg your pardon? I don't like that word. I beg your pardon? Heyday. I don't like it. Why don't you like it, Albert? I just don't like it. Well, if you don't like it, Albert, I won't use it. There are people in Hunslet who care very, very much about the outcome of this match. And about what's written about it. I understand. If you want to see what Messenger's up against, you come down and watch me train sometime. And when do you train, Albert? Any time I like. And when do you like? Now! Come on! It's the fastest thing in game. Mm. Faster than Messenger? I'd say so. We'll find out soon, won't we? George, what I want is sixpence gate money and a 50-50 split. Now, that's what we agreed. We agreed a 50-50 split, George. George... That's what we agreed. Now, Jim, George, look, I respect you. I respect you as a person, and I respect you as a man. And I respect you, Jim. And I swear to you that the money is not simply the issue. If it was, George, I would not be sitting here talking to you now like this. And I wouldn't be talking to you in this way, Jim. What's at stake, George, is the trust and the integrity and our professional relationship, the professional relationship that exists between me and you. That's exactly how I view the situation, Jim. God, how long have those two been out? I think he's finally made his match. The other bloke started crying a while ago. It was fantastic. <laughs> what are they arguing over? Sixpence, I don't know. Magic one. Magic two. Magic three. You all right, Mr. Gilbert? <sighs> I mean, training, Mrs. Oakes. Ah, oh, do huh? round you? Yes, Mrs. Oakes, you do round me. Six. Hello? Are you sure you're all right down there, Mr. Goldthorpe? Mrs. Oakes, when I get to a hundred, I want you to sit on my back. Yeah. I beg your pardon? Sit on my back. Was that safe, Mr. Goldthorpe? It's a broad back, Mrs. Oakes. There's going to be a lot worse happening to it on Saturday. <laughs> Mrs. Oakes? Yes, Mr. Goldthorpe. Sit.
And what can I do for you, then? Mr. Gelsinen gave me a list of questions he'd like to see asked. You did, did he? Some of them are a bit, uh... Odd. Isn't this supposed to be your job? Well, it is, but, uh... I've not been interviewing sports personalities as such for very long. Hmm. Well, sit down, then. He knows how to pick them, doesn't he? Oh, oh. These are all right. Except the one about the boomerang. I'll not answer that. It's stupid. I don't fully understand it myself. Don't you read the papers? Well, I, uh... I'm more interested in the arts, really. Now, listen to this, you. The Battle of the Giants, huh? Goldthorpe versus Messenger. Wonderful. My favourite. The old lion struggles with the young pup. <laughs> you, young man, must be the 20th reporter to come and interview me. And they all asked exactly the same questions. Although, generally, I have to say they asked a little less naively than you. The fact of the matter is, this man has taken out and got at, in some way, the entire core of sporting journalists in Northern England. Now, how does he do it, eh? Is this the shape of things to come? Well, I hope not. When him and his lads came over, we were playing something called rugby football. People came or they didn't. And now, I feel as if I'm in the middle of a three-ring circus. He is very energetic. And you know the dreadful thing? The really awful thing about his method? It bloody works. Do you think Messenger will... You see, even you're doing it. Now you print that. But the Hunslet match, financially speaking, is the making or breaking of this tour. And we've got to get a full house. So I've decided we're going to push one more effort here. Now this is Mr. Falthorpe from the Keithley District Zoo. How do you do? How do, you do? Mr. Falthorpe has kindly said that uh, we'll be able to borrow a kangaroo from the Keithley District Zoo. I mean, borrow, Jim? Uh, perhaps I should explain, gentlemen. I'm not actually at the present uh, employed by the Keithley District Zoo, as I parted company with them over their quite appalling treatment of some animals. But I know there is a kangaroo in the zoo, and I'm willing to help the animal escape. Why? Well, not only were the zebras not given sufficient hay, but a group of fish were placed no, in no. the tank. I mean, why do we need a kangaroo, Jim? It's a kangaroo. I'm not sure I'm with you, Jim. Mascot, Danny. I assume we could be photographed with it. We could take it to the gallery. Oh, it's like the boys catching on. Mr. Gildner has given me assurances that the animal will be well cared for. In time, return to its native Australia. In triumph. Yeah. yeah. Now, how will it be cared for, Jim? Dally, I don't think we have to worry about that. Uh, Mr. Falthor. Now, yeah. just gather around here, lads. We'll push it along this passage here. Two men will go out onto this roof here and come in facing the gibbons. And another group will enter under this fence. Come on, let's go. You sure it'll be all right? It's only a kangaroo. What do you mean, only? I'm only a kangaroo, aren't I? Oh, 
Oh. One more, please, gentlemen. Can you keep the kangaroos You're still? not staying in hotels anymore, are you, Jim? Uh, no, we're not, Alex. Um, three. Three. Ah. Just, yeah. ah. uh, no, uh, we are actually uh, trying to save a bit of cash at the moment. But the, the lads are really enjoying it here, mucking in, doing the uh, washing up and keeping the garden neat and tidy. The Hunslet game, that's going to be something. Do you think the team are going to do well? Uh, the Hunslet game, Alex, that's the central feature of our tour. So, what if you talk to Bluey? Just excuse me for a minute. Thing. That poor little bugger hopping around back there was the last straw. Thank you, I'm not, I'm not worried about a bloody old kangaroo, are you? Look, I'm not the kind of bloke who can talk, you know. But why did we leave the union in the first place? Because it didn't seem right, did it? Right. And we wanted a bit of cash. Because you're sitting up on your hind legs begging for a handout from those bastards. Yeah, and what are we doing now? We're on our hind bloody legs all the time, aren't we? Oh. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I just don't feel like it's my game sometimes. I, I feel like I'm in some kind of pantomime written and directed by James Giltman. I mean, is this going to be the game from now on? Or are we going to go around like a bunch of performance seals to earn our keep? Well, everyone has to earn their keep, Dally. Uh, if you don't, someone else has to do it, and then they'll take a hand out. I bet you take your hand out, don't you? Look, Stanley, your mother won't be looking after your business for the rest of your life, you know? He's all right, just a long way from home. New Delhi or the Rue. Don't worry. Poor little thing. Delhi. I'll tell you one thing. It's probably just what you wanted. You'll get a bloody vicious game against Goldthorpe. Well, it better be. We got to make up 500 pounds or we're bust. Thank you, John. Well, how do you estimate your chances, Albert? Our chances are very, very, very good. Yeah, good what do you think of Dolly Messenger? Dolly Messenger, I'm told, is a very pleasant young man and apparently very fond of his mother. Therefore, I would like to take this opportunity of apologizing to her in advance as to what's going to happen to him. Today, Dally Messenger is going to suffer. Gentlemen. So what's the news, Albert? Just chuck me that ball. What do we do, Albert? You look after what's his name while I'm busy. We'll look after him, all right, Albert. <laughs> So 
am I? Where is that then? Well, there aren't enough of the bastards. Just have a rest a minute. Wait, now, where does it hurt? Nothing's broken. I'm all right. Not your leg again? No. The messenger's looking a bit poorly, isn't he? I think someone's took his teddy bear. <laughs> He's coming back. Oh. Ah, not for long, though, eh, lads, eh? Why don't you try playing rugby football this time instead of lines of bloody questions, you bastards? between either of them at the moment. Well, you know they're golfful. He may be old, but he's fast. Dally, if you want to give it away, mate. Forget it. We'll be all right. Go on, son, go on! <laughs> You're in Hansard, mate, in the north of England. Hey. What's the light, Jim? Well, the, the beer's no good. 
and there's no women. The hotels are awful, and the, the rugby players have got the ethics of one of the nastier variety of shark. Oh, yeah. I think I can sit up. Can you stand? Ooh. Come on, give him a hand, boys. Get him up. Hey, hold it. He's got up. Yeah, sit down again. <laughs> Bloody hell. left chum. Don't know how long you've got though. for this one. Jim. Doing the accounts, I think. 
in his room. Jim, I'm sorry about it, all the stuff that's... Don't mention it, boy. Five hundred? Christ. So we did all right? Well, we did all right. How do you mean? Well, I owe a bit. How much? A fair bit. I had to uh, take out a bit of a mortgage to pay the expenses. And what? Oh, I think I'm kind of bankrupt. I mean, I just play rugby for fun, you know. Dally. Like I said, I don't do it for money. <laughs> well, it doesn't look like I do either, does it? <laughs> Just one thing. What? Don't tell your mother about this. I don't think she'd be my best girl if I did, Jim. I won't. Oh, yeah, uh, there's a party on for us. Girls, the lot. Girls. I remember girls.